And in this video we'll finish up uh, section 1.5, complex numbers. Uh, so we're going to talk first complex conjugates. And you know what a conjugate is. You know, if we have the number 1 plus the square root of 7, we would want to multiply that by its conjugate to get rid of the radical. And that conjugate, of course, is going to be the same terms. The 1 and the root 7 will be the same. But the sign changes. Here it was a plus. It'll flop to a minus. And if we FOIL it out, there is no middle term. And hence, the square root of 7 will be gone. So. Uh, Oh, this is from a previous example that's not in the slideshow, uh, that the product, or yeah, it was in the last video. Uh, the product of two complex numbers can be a real number. This occurs when pairs of complex numbers are in the form of a plus bi and a minus bi, and they're called complex conjugates. So if we have a plus bi times a minus bi, you know, we'd multiply our first terms and get a squared. The outers would be minus a bi, and the inners would be plus a bi. And then the last term would be b squared i squared. The middle terms will cancel out because we have a, a 1 of each, a plus and a minus. Uh, whatever b squared is will be multiplied by i squared, and i squared is negative 1. And that's just going to change this sign to a plus, a squared plus b squared. So here in uh, the first example in this video, example 3, we got a couple numbers, and we're going to multiply them by their complex conjugate. So for letter a, we have 1 plus i. And we're going to multiply that by its conjugate, 1 minus i. And when we did conjugates before, you know, we can just do this. We don't have to worry about the outers and the inners. We know they will always cancel. So just do first term times first term. 1 times 1 is 1. Plus times minus, positive times negative is always negative. i times negative i, or I mean just i times i, is i squared. And we know i squared, now careful, this is 1 minus i squared, and i squared is negative 1. And then these signs, a negative times a negative will become a positive. 1 plus 1, and I hope we all remember that 1 plus 1 is 2. Uh, letter B is a little trickier, because we have a 4 and a 3 in there. The real component is 4, and stuck in there with the imaginary component, we have a 3. But that's no problem. So we're going to multiply it by its conjugate, 4 plus 3i, and do first term times first term, 16, minus 3 times 3 is 9, i times i is i squared, which is negative 1. And that negative 1, or i squared, is going to you know, change this to a plus, 16 plus 9, which is 25. Uh, to write the quotient of two complex numbers, a plus bi and c plus di in standard form, where c and d are not 0, multiply the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So it's a lot like what we did with, you know, just doing uh, conjugates in general uh, earlier in the year. You know, now we're just doing it with a complex number. When you do this, if you do it right and combine everything properly, you're going to have no imaginary numbers in the denominator. Remember when we rationalized like 3 over 1 plus the root of 7? When we were all done, there were no more radicals in the denominator. There might be one in the numerator, but that was fine. Uh, to do this for imaginary numbers, when we're all done, there will be no imaginary numbers left in that denominator. Uh, so let's do this. Write the quotient of a complex number in standard form. We have 2 plus 3i in the numerator, 4 minus 2i in the denominator. So we are going to multiply by the complex conjugate of that denominator. And you know, I like to put mine in parentheses, so I always remember that that is a group, a quantity. So the numerator and denominator are both multiplied by 4 plus 2i. 4 plus 2i. So let's see what happens here. Den the denominator will be the easy part. You know, 4 times 4 is 16. Negative times positive is negative. 2i times 2i is 4i squared. And the i squared will wipe out this negative, make that positive. So now we have 16 plus 4 is 20. 20 is our denominator. And I'm going to move down here. And now we're just going to FOIL out that numerator and condense it as much as we can. 
first terms will be an 8, and then plus outers are 4i, plus the inners 12i, plus 3i times 2i is 6i squared. And the i squared is going to flip this sign to a negative. So let's condense everything down, make it look nice and pretty for our final answer. Uh, the real component here we have is 8 minus 6. 8 minus 6 is 2. And 4i plus 12i is plus 16i. So is that as simplified as we can make that complex number? I'm looking at every coefficient, and every coefficient is divisible by 2. So if we divide all the numbers by 2, 2 divided by 2, that's going to be a 1. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So we could reduce this as 1 plus 8i divided by 10. Ah, now we're going uh, to talk complex solutions to quadratic equations. Uh, when using the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic equation, you often obtain a result such as square root of negative 3, which you know is not a real number. By factoring out i as equal to the square root of negative 1, you can write this number in standard form. So now here's the steps the book shows you, the square root of negative 3, and they change the negative uh, they change it into 3 times negative 1. Negative 1, we break it apart into two square roots, square root of 3 times the square root of negative 1, and then it just becomes 3 times i. You know, when I look at these, here's how I see it. If you got a negative under your radical and you want to factor it out, that negative immediately jumps out and turns into i. So you'd have i times the square root of 3. But, you know, if, if this process appeals to you and that's how you'd like to think about it and keep it straight in your head, by all means, go ahead. Uh, this is how I condensed it down when I was in high school. If you see a negative under the radical, bring it out. It turns into the imaginary units. So here in the blue box, we have the uh, principal square root of a negative number. If a is a positive number, the principal square root of the negative number, negative a, is defined as, you know, our principal square root of negative a is just a times i. And sometimes, you know, it's easy you know, when you're doing your homework or something. If you draw that out just a little too far, it looks like the i is under the radical, and that does technically make it a wrong answer. Uh, it might be a little bit better to put our imaginary units in front of the radical. So here we go in example 5. Now, we worked with radicals and the properties of them uh, before. And a lot of students, they see this and they instinctively think, okay, I got a radical times a radical, so my answer is going to be a radical. And I can multiply what's under it. Negative 3 times negative 12 is positive 36. And then the square root of 36 is 6. And if you do it that way, you're going to get it wrong. Because the first thing we should address is that imaginary piece. So here, the first part, we can factor out the negative. That's going to be i times the root of 3. And then we're going to have times factor out this negative i times the root of 12. Now if we multiply straight across, i times i is i squared. And now we can do root 3 times root 12 is root 36. And we know that i squared is negative 1. And the square root of 36 is 6. So we multiply negative 1 times 6 and get negative 6. So be careful, you know, address the negative under the radical first. You've got to take care of that. Uh, now, multiplying was uh, pretty straightforward. Here we are subtracting. Whoa, got a few of these here. All right. I got some extra of these. Uh, we want to add or subtract. You know, just like adding radicals, we can't add them unless what is under the radical is the same. So here, first I'm going to factor out the negative. We're going to have i times the root of 48 minus, and we're going to factor out that negative as i, square root 27. Now, we can't add or subtract until we get what is under the radical uh, the same. So we want to factor out the biggest uh, positive, or I mean a uh, perfect square that we can. So, how can we break up 48? Well, 16 times 3 is 48, and 16 is a perfect square. So we can rewrite this as square root of 16 times the square root of 3, and then minus i. Why did I write 29? Why didn't you tell me that is a 27? We can see right here. And 27 is 9 times 3. 
So we can break the square root of 27 up into the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. And now we have the square root of 16 is 4, and then we'll put our i after that, square root 3, uh, minus the square root of 9 is 3, and then we'll put our i times the square root of 3. And now, since we have apples and apples instead of apples and oranges, we can actually add or subtract the quantity in front of the radical. So think about this as 4i times x minus 3i times x. Well, 4i minus 3i is 1i times x, or in this case, that is just a square root of 3. i times the square root of 3. Uh, now, let's see, in the last one, we just have something that we're uh, squaring out, a uh, binomial in the parentheses, quantity squared. And let's see what we have here. You know, the last couple times we've sort of done that little shortcut. Let's, uh, let's just write this one out and uh, multiply it, foil it out. So we have our negative 1 plus. Uh, and let's, you know, address that negative under there right now, bring that negative out. And it's going to be i times the square root of 3. And then, you know, our quantity is squared. So we're going to multiply that by itself negative 1 plus i root 3. So off of foiling we go. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 1 times this quantity is minus i square root 3. And then here in the middle, negative 1 times that is another minus i square root 3. And then our final term, plus times plus is positive. i times i is i squared. And then we have root 3 times root 3, which is 3. And let's uh, clean this up a little bit. Here we're going to have a 1 minus minus 1i root 3 minus another i root 3 is minus 2i times square root 3. And then this i squared is going to take care of that plus sign, make it a minus, and we still have our 3. And one more step, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Minus 2 is the real component. And then we have our minus 2i times square root 3. There's our final answer in standard form. Ah, now, complex solutions to quadratic equations. Uh, remember, with the quadratic formula, the numerator of that, we have our negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Remember, under the radical is our discriminant. And we said before, if that turned out to be a negative number, we knew there were no real solutions. And that meant our parabola never crossed the x-axis. Uh, now that we know these uh, imaginary numbers and complex numbers, we can actually find those complex solutions to quadratic equations. Uh, so let's take a look at this first one. Move this down here, give myself a little more room. And there we go. So, you know, we have x squared. Uh, we don't have an x term, so think about that as plus 0x and then our plus 4. You know, we just don't want to skip that. You know, we need a, b, and c for the quadratic formula, and there is a b value. You know, it's, it's kind of hidden in there. It's implied, but we've got to, you know, pull it out. So the number in front of our squared term is a 1. The number in front of our x term is a 0 and our c value is 4. So let's plug these into the quadratic formula. Uh, let's see, negative b is our leading term in the numerator, uh, and that would be negative 0, and you know that doesn't make sense, 0 is neither positive nor negative, plus or minus, then we have our radical. b squared is going to be 0 squared minus 4 times a times c, a and c being 1 and 4. Our denominator is just 2 times a, which is 2 times 1, or 2. So let's uh, see what happens under the radical. This 0, you know, is meaningless, so we're just going to have our plus or minus. Our square root, uh, 0 squared is 0, and then we're going to have minus 4 times 4 is 16. So that turns into a negative 16 under the radical, and that's divided by the denominator 2. So we bring out in front here, uh, we have our plus minus, bring out the negative as a i, and 16 is a perfect square. Square root of 16 is 4, and we're dividing that by 2. Uh, and then we have our uh, 4 divided by 2 is going to be plus or minus 2 i. 
And now that I just did all that work, I do see an easier way to do this. You know, I, I focused in on the word quadratic, so I went to the quadratic formula. Is there an easier way to solve that problem? Oh, I'll bring that back because I will need the quadratic for the next one. Is there an easier way to solve that problem? Yeah, we, we only have a squared term. We don't have an x term. We could have just extracted the square roots. So we want to isolate the squared term by subtracting 4 from each side. So x squared would equal negative 4. And then we square root each side. So we have x equals the square root of negative 4. Bring out the negative as i. x equals i. And then our well, plus or minus when we square root the 4. Square root of 4 is 2, plus or minus 2. So plus or minus i times the square root of 2. Uh, an easier way to do it. But we did need practice with the quadratic formula anyway, and it is fun to use. And now we're really going to need it here. Here our a value is 3, our b value is negative 2, and our c value is 5. So into the quadratic, negative b, negative 2, plus or minus b squared is going to be negative 2 squared, or 4 minus 4 times a times c. a times c is 15. Uh, denominator, 2 times a is 2 times 3. So the negative negative 2 becomes a positive 2, plus and minus. We have our radical. And then we're going to have under the radical 4 minus. 4 times 15 is 60. 4 minus 60 is negative 56. And that is all divided by 6. And let's uh, work with that radical a little bit. So we're going to have our 2, plus or minus. And let's see, the negative is going to come out as an imaginary piece. And is there a perfect square hidden in 56? This didn't get used a lot in class, but there is one in there. That would be 4 times 14. And we know that the square root of 4 is going to come out as a 2. And then we'll have a radical with a 14 stuck under it. And then let's not forget our denominator. That is divided by 6. All right, can we simplify it any more? Yes. Uh, every coefficient is even, divisible by 2. 2 divided by 2, that's going to be a 1. This 2 divided by 2 is going to turn into a 1. 6 divided by 2 is going to be a 3. So uh, we're now left with 1 plus or minus i times the root of 14 over 3. And there's our two answers to that uh, quadratic equation, two complex solutions. And uh, that was a long one, but we're done. I think the practice problems are next. Yeah, the team huddle. You know, first one, write it in standard form. That means get uh, rationalize that denominator. Uh, write this one in standard form. Remember, you got to address that negative first. Uh, last one, use the quadratic. So pause the video and try the problems and see if you got them. Okay, let's see here. Uh, the first one, we're going to multiply that by its complex conjugate. 1 pl minus i, that conjugate is 1 plus i. And the numerator also gets its own 1 plus i. Multiply across that numerator, you get 13 times the quantity, 1 plus i. And I wouldn't distribute the 13. Uh, here we're going to foil this out, or you know, since it is a sum and a difference, first term times first term is 1, and then we're going to have minus i times i is i squared, and i squared is negative 1, so that's going to be 1 minus negative 1, which turns into a plus. 1 plus 1 is 2, and then we have it divided by that numerator. And you know, again, I don't like to distribute in this case, but if you did on a test or a quiz, I'd be fine with it. Uh, number 66. Let's see here. Now write it in standard form. And again, we have a quantity squared, and it's under a radical, and it's negative. First thing you want to do is get that uh, negative out from under the radical. So we're going to factor out that negative as i, and then the square root of 75. Now what you might be thinking is, oh, there's a perfect square in there. You know, uh, 75 is 25 times 3, and I could bring that out. It doesn't matter, because now we're going to square it anyway. 
and you know that would just sort of make a little bit of uh, extra work for us. So when we have i times the root of 75 quantity squared, either think about distributing that squared to each term in there, or you're multiplying this by itself. So we're going to multiply by i root 75. And i times i is i squared. The square root of 75 times the square root of 75 is 75. And remember, i squared is negative 1. So negative 1 times 75 is negative 75. I deserve a round of applause for that. There we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, number 70, last one is quadratic formula. Oops. There we go. Uh, quadratic formula. So pull out your ABC. A equals 1. B is 6, and C is equal to 10. So the quadratics, uh, numerator is negative B plus and minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C divided by 2 times A. So uh, numerator, we start with our negative 6 plus and minus. Under the radical, we have 36 minus 4 times 1 times 10 is 40. So that turns into a root of negative 4. Ooh, that's going to be nice. 4 is a perfect square, and we can bring that negative out. And our denominator is a 2. Uh, so let's see. Numerator, negative 6, plus and minus. The square root of 4 is 2, and the negative comes out as i. So we have our 2i divided by 2. And again, all coefficients are divisible by 3. Or 2, excuse me. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the denominator, divide by 1, we can leave off. And we're left with negative 3 plus and minus i. And I believe that's it for this section. Uh, the homework, 1-5-day-1, one, one, page 128 in the book, These Problems.